When Anderl IPOs, it will be one of the most hyped defense tech stocks since Palantir. In the meantime, Kraken Robotics is a small cap stock that we believe can ride on Anderl's coattails. Kraken has three core product lines. First product is what they call Robotics as a Service, in which Kraken will own the entire project of surveying the underwater locations and infrastructures and provide the interpreted data. This is useful to offshore energy companies who need it to pre-construction to identify potential hazards like underwater boulders and for ongoing maintenance and inspection needs. This is a high margin business that provides Kraken a profit stream that is not the defense industry. But the next product segments are what excite me the most. These two are subsea batteries and subsea sonar devices. Kraken has a technologically advanced product for both of these that give them the edge, especially with the challenges of operating these high pressure environments in the deep ocean depths. The submarine industry is moving away from traditionally manned submarines to underwater autonomous vehicles, which makes Kraken's subsea battery ever more important. This design is pressure tolerant, so eliminates the need for thick metal housings, which gives Kraken the highest energy density in the market. This energy density means that underwater vehicles using this battery can operate underwater for significantly longer durations and at greater depths. The superior technology is also seen in their sonar devices. Kraken's sonar are up to 30 times higher resolution than traditional devices, which the superior resolution is essential for faster and more accurate classifications. The main customer of these superior products are mostly the defense industry. Most important for our thesis is Anderol. Anderol is an up-and-coming defense tech manufacturer that is a leader in building autonomous machines for the military. Whether that be UAVs, so unmanned aerial vehicles, or in this case, UUVs, unmanned underwater vehicles. What makes Anderol special is they integrate these autonomous drones through their AI software platform, Lattice. And these allow these drones to make decisions instantaneously and coordinate with other systems. For unmanned underwater vehicles, they have announced two products, the Dive LD and Ghost Shark, of which the United States Navy and the Australian Navy have already placed orders for over a billion dollars worth of these just to start. Anderol is leaning in and building up factories in the United States and Australia to ramp up these products to very high volumes, so they are expecting future big waters. Tying all this back to Kraken, and this would be a huge deal for Kraken's financial outlook. For the smaller Dive LD, Anderol is capacitizing its factory for 200 of these a year. Assuming just 50% of this capacity, then Kraken would generate $400 million of revenue, as estimated about $4 million of the batteries and solar sonar apparatus per UUV. For the larger Ghost Shark produced in Australia, for current order of dozens, let's assume 20 per year of these get made. Even though it is a low volume, estimates are $8 million per Kraken platform per Ghost Shark, so it would be $160 million. Combined, Anderol can be a $560 million customer for Kraken, which looking at Kraken's trail and revenue would be a monumental step change. 2025 estimates are for $90 million in USD, which has a CAGR of 50% since 2021. More importantly, we see that with higher volumes, Kraken has been able to gain scale and operating leverage and has increased their EBITDA margins every year to now 23%. It is amazing that despite such a small company, they already have such a good EBITDA margins and would be gap profitable if not for their acquisitions this year and their build out of more factory capacity to enable 3x more capacity of subsea batteries to what I predict is to match future Android orders. Now, when putting a 2030 price target for Kraken, I went with the $560 million revenue that we showed earlier that comes strictly from Anderol. I'm not counting their robotic as a software commercial revenue, nor other customers, as I do think that those become a small part overall for the revenue versus what Anderol becomes. This CAGR to meet this would be 43%, which is lower than the 50% revenue CAGR in the past five years. For EBITDA margins, I'm going with 25%, which is only slightly higher than the 23% now. Even though higher volume will help gain operating leverage, I can see 
that should Android be a higher concentration of revenue, that they have to give lower prices that, it, that offset some of this. For a price to EBITDA ratio, I assume a 25. This is on the higher side, but is warranted for a company like Kraken. The revenue growth is higher than most software tech companies, and it has a moat in the form of a technological advantage. Also, serving the defense industry gives it a more predictable revenue and profit stream as the contracts are signed way in advance. Tying all this together, an upside reward for Kraken is there as a stock multi-bagger, despite its massive stock run-up already in the past couple years. Besides the fundamentals, the narrative around Kraken is quite strong. First is a potential uplist to the NASDAQ exchange, which would open up tons more liquidity for the stock that is currently trading on the OTC markets. The key milestone left to meet this uplist criteria is the need to maintain trading above $4 per share for 90 consecutive trading days. Again, this isn't a sole reason for me to buy the stock, but it is a factor I consider for upcoming momentum and volatility expectations. A second factor that I consider is the possibility that Anderol may eventually acquire Kraken outright. Anderol is a $35 billion valuation company, so could easily buy out Kraken without much impact to their balance sheet, especially since Anderol prides itself as being a vertically integrated operation. Anderol strives to have the best technology available as well, and on Kraken's subsea sonar and subsea batteries being the, the leaders, um, why would they want to downgrade to, to something worse off um, right now and, and qualify competitor? Similar to the aerospace industry, the opportunities to qualify later on also would be challenging should there be Kraken supply issues, as these vehicles go through rigorous testing and certifications that just take a very long time and a lot of money. In short, it would be silly for Anderol to jeopardize losing out on billions of dollars of orders and deliveries of their unmanned underwater vehicles should Kraken be the sole point of failure in their supply chain. That perhaps it makes sense for Anderol to eliminate that risk and just buy Kraken outright. So these are two very positive narratives that may help push Kraken above fundamentally supported market caps that I will want to consider and, and keep an eye on. Now, before we run Kraken through my Five point framework, please read the disclaimer in the notes below. We are not financial advisors and anything we say should not be taken as financial advice. Also, if you like content like this, please help us out and click like and subscribe to keep up on our journey of analyzing the most innovative companies twice per week. Now let's go through my framework. From a leadership perspective, I give Kraken a week. Their CEO, Greg Reed, has been at Kraken for over 10 years. For me, the issue, though, is he has no experience in operations nor in product strategy. All experience is in finance or equity research, which made sense when Kraken was a micro cap stock just a few years ago as they were desperate need to fundraise. Whereas today, they're needing to execute manufacturing ramp plans to ensure they can execute on time to avoid missed projections. Would prefer Kraken to have a leader who has operational excellence experience for this phase in their company. From a valuation perspective, I give Kraken a strong. They handily beat my 15% annual stock return target with potential to 3x in five years. For revenue growth plus profitability, I give Kraken a very strong. Past five years growth has been incredible growth from $18 million in 2021 to $90 million expected for 2025. And as long as Anderol grows as expected, this can be a 40% plus revenue growth annually for the next five years with gap profitability. For total addressable market, I give this a strong. The sales pipeline for Kraken is noted as $2 billion today, of which they've only captured less than 5% of it at the $90 million this year. They currently package subsea sonar plus subsea batteries as a platform that perhaps they can look into other products to add to to their offerings and increase their total addressable market even more. They've shown an inquisitive history to broaden their product lines. For Tailwinds, I give Kraken a strong. There's been a lot of defense spending uh, thus far on aerial drones. However, I believe now is the time that underwater drones become more prevalent with the Tailwind to replace traditional manned submarines with these AI-enabled autonomous underwater drones. It doesn't hurt either that Androls invest in this product line as well and pushing governments add it to their fleet. 
Overall, I like what I see in Kraken's growth story and would love to add them to our community portfolio. However, the stock has really run up a lot this past month, so I would love for it to revert out of an overbought RSI indicator in the technicals before buying. So it would be target price at roughly three, three and a half dollars. Love the company and own it in my personal portfolio, but would want to avoid getting caught in a short term FOMO stock surge before adding it to our community portfolio. What do you think, Dad, as you look at Kraken through your framework and the, the more detailed technicals? Thank you, Scott, for that wonderful presentation. Yes, I like to do my um, evaluation on Kraken. Symbol KRKNF. It's the uh, it's on the pink sheets or over the counter um, bulletin board. I think that's what they call it now. But anyway, that's what they used to call it at least. So, so for company fundamentals, um, they don't have a dividend. I couldn't find their beta, but I'm sure their beta is very high. And earnings comes out on November 21st. So for that, I'm neutral. And for earnings history, there's only one quarter that analysts covered it and they beat it that quarter so so for that i'm um neutral because i don't really have a his, four quarter history so it's just one one quarter that they reported that an analyst had some um predictions on it so for company fundamentals the adjusted ebitda margin is 23 percent the debt to equity is 55 percent and there's no peg ratio but they do have a p PE of 148, 148. So for that, I'm neutral because of the, uh, you know, that's not really that high in the, in the adjusted EBITDA margin is, is over 20%. So that's a neutral. Okay, now let's look at the um, stock technicals. As you could see, the Bollinger Bands, it's been really tight, really tight previously. And then all of a sudden it, it exploded. Um, and it, it got very volatile. And if you're looking at it, it's it's hogging the upper band, and it's been above the middle band for many months now. So um, it's very rare to keep hugging the band for that long. I mean, it it can, but um, I feel that that uh, I I feel that it's going to come to the middle band, which is around three point seven. That's my my personal target on, on the stock price, um, and I'll go over that later at the end. And uh, like I said, the volatility has increased. Okay, let's look at the moving average. The moving average is, is very good. The stock price is above the 50-day and 200-day. The 50-day is above the 200-day, which is positive. And the slope of the 200-day is positive, which is also a positive. Then I look at the um, slow stochastic oscillator. It's 84%, which means it's... Um, it's it's overbought, so that also gives me some some help and guidance in in with the Bollinger Bands, and I really feel that I feel it's gonna go back down to at least three point seven at this time. Um, the MACD is negative, and the unbalanced volume is negative. So total for the stock technicals, it's a, a neutral to negative because of the. Um, in, in my opinion, it's gonna, I think it's going to go down to the middle band at least. Okay, and then for the last one, for analyst coverage, there's one hold and one buy, and um, there's no nothing there for institutional um, percentage. I couldn't find anything on it. But so overall, I think that it's not a no and it's not a yes. I think it's just at this time, I'd wait till it gets to 3.7, but with the, with the sonar they have, and the battery, I, I think, and, and with their connection with, I always mispronounce it, but Anderol, uh, I think that uh, it's either, it could be a buyout candidate with Adderall, or it's going to be um, a very important supplier to Adderall. So so basically, I'm not a no, I'm not a yes, I'm in the middle, and I would wait until um, it's 3.6 at this time. So back to you, Scott. Thanks, Dad. In short, we both love this company's products and growth outlook. A small cap company with 40 plus percent organic revenue growth and gap profitability is exactly what we look for to add to our portfolio. However, since September, this stock has really run ahead 
of its fundamentals and technicals support its stock price. We will add should it revert back to around $3.50, which with how volatile this stock is, it might reach this stock target tomorrow based on just a single tweet. With that said, thank you for watching. To keep up on our journey, please like and subscribe as we analyze the most innovative companies twice per week. Until next time, happy investing.